Today on Alex Nautos, we're out here taking a look at the 2014 Hyundai Santa Fe Sport. Now the Santa Fe and the Santa Fe Sport are very closely related, but there are some key differences. The Santa Fe Sport is the five passenger version. It's a two row crossover and we have four cylinder engines under the hood. The regular Santa Fe without the Sport is a six or seven passenger three row crossover with a six cylinder engine under the hood. Now, if the Santa Fe versus Santa Fe Sport is confusing you, then let me add just a little bit of extra confusion because Hyundai is also still selling the Tucson in the US. This is not replacing the Tucson in their lineup. That means that both of these vehicles compete with the likes of the Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, Chevy Equinox, Nissan Rogue, Jeep Cherokee, etc. Now, the key difference is that the Tucson is the smaller vehicle, so it very directly competes with the CRV, RAV4, etc., whereas this is a much larger vehicle. So, this actually is about the same size as the Ford Edge and the Toyota Venza. So, this is a mid sized two row crossover, and the other is a compact two row crossover. Now, that distinction is very important as we go around the Santa Fe Sport because there aren't very many competitors in this mid sized two row crossover to directly compare the Santa Fe Sport with. And that's why you see most of the comparisons on Hyundai's own website featuring the CRV, RAV4, etc. The Santa Fe Sport has all of Hyundai's latest design themes going on up front. We have these bold headlamps, these interestingly shaped fog lamps that actually stick out of the front of the vehicle rather than being recessed into the front of the vehicle like you find in most cars out on the road. And we also have this new trapezoidal grill right here with a three bar, very large and bold chrome grill. Up front, we have a few options that you don't find in the cheaper entries in this segment. So we do have available Xenon headlamps and LED daytime running lamps. And overall, I think this front end is incredibly attractive. This is definitely one of the most masculine entries in this segment. It reminds me an awful lot of the Ford Edge, which I think is a very good thing. The side profile of this generation Santa Fe is definitely a little bit boxier than before. We have this tall hood right here. We have a relatively simple sideline that swoops up towards the back, as you can see right here. Now we do have a roof that retains its consistent height all the way to the back that helps improve rear seat room. And if you got the Santa Fe without the Sport, that's the six or seven passenger version, then we get an extra 10 inches right back here for a third row. If you take a look at the ruler at the bottom of your screen, you can see that this is two inches longer than a Jeep Cherokee, six inches longer than a CRV, five inches longer than a RAV4, but it is about 10 inches shorter than a Dodge Journey and about three inches shorter than a Chevy Equinox. This is right about the same size overall as a Ford Edge. Now, right back here on the rear, you'll notice that we do have this sloping rear glass, but this doesn't slope quite as severely as you'll find in your average five passenger SUV. That means we have a little bit more cargo room right back here than you'll find in some of those competitors. As with many mainstream crossover vehicles, the rear end is definitely form follows function. We have this rear glass that is a little bit more vertical than you'd find in some of the competition out there. Some of the competition has a very sloped rear glass that does cut in on rear cargo practicality. It's not going on here. Our model has the option of LED tail lamps, which are very attractive. We have rear parking sensors on our particular model as well. Single exhaust tip right over there on that side. Overall, I give the Santa Fe Sport 9 out of 10 points when it comes to my exterior style score. Go ahead and let me know what you think about it down there in the comment section down below. Now in the Sport variant of the Santa Fe, you won't find a V6 engine. Instead, we have a base 2.4 liter four cylinder engine, it produces 190 horsepower and 181 pound feet of torque. It's a little bit more than most of the other entries in this segment. If that's not enough oomph for you, you can opt for the two liter turbocharged engine. It produces 264 horsepower and 269 pound feet of torque. Both of these engines are mated by default to a six speed automatic transmission, sending power right here to the front wheels. But for an additional $1,750, you can get an optional all wheel drive system with either engine. Fuel economy comes in at 20 miles per gallon city, 27 highway and 23 combined for the front wheel drive 2.4 liter engine. It drops slightly to 19, 25, 21 with all wheel drive. If you get the turbo engine, fuel economy comes in at 19 miles per gallon city, 27 highway and 22 combined for front wheel drive, 18, 24, 21 for all wheel drive. Now, due to the overall size and the fact that we don't have a CVT under this hood, you'll notice that the fuel economy numbers in the brand new 2015 CRV, as well as the Nissan Rogue, are a little bit higher than this. Front seat comfort ranges from 8 out of 10 points in the base models to 9 out of 10 points in the upper trim levels. Our particular model has the optional 12 way driver's seat with a four way adjustable power lumbar support and a two position seat memory right there on the door. We do have a tilt telescopic steering column, but the range of motion isn't quite as large as you'll find in something like a Ford Edge. The Ford Edge's steering wheel does come out a decent amount further. We also don't have a passenger seat with the same range of motion as the driver. The passenger seat is lacking that four way lumbar support. Moving back to the second row, we get 10 out of 10 points back here in our particular model, nine out of 10 points in the base model. Our model does have the reclining seat backs. It goes from this very vertical position to help you square off that cargo area to a position that's 
far more reclined than your average crossover vehicle. This actually is a fairly comfortable seat. It also is nicely padded and our particular model has the optional sliding second row to help you again square off the cargo area and get a little bit extra cargo room back there. This is about as far forward as I can go. That is about as far back as I can go. Now padding in the middle seat is a little bit stiffer than in the outboard seats as you would expect. However, this middle seat is still relatively comfortable as far as middle seats go. You'll see why I give this 10 out of 10 points in rear comfort because even though we're in the model with the panoramic sunroof, which does cut down on headroom, I still have about an inch of headroom right here in this middle seat. Now the Santa Fe does have a bucket style rear bench seat, so the middle seat is higher off the ground than the outboard seats. If I scoot over here to this other side, then I have about an inch again over here because of the way that the ceiling is formed with this panoramic roof. I would have about two and a half inches or so if we didn't have the panoramic roof. Now this front seat is adjusted for a six foot five passenger that I had in the vehicle and I still have about two inches of legroom left right there. Now some nice touches in the back are air vents that are actually on the B pillars of the vehicle. They're not in the center console. I find that positioning a little bit better because the vent can actually be a little bit higher up towards my face. We still have foot vents down there on the floor and our model also has these optional window shades that are integrated very nicely into the door. The fold down center armrest in the back is not as softly padded as you'll find in something like a Ford Edge. But we do get two very large cup holders right there. We also get a very handy feature in that this rear seat back folds in a 40, 20, 40 folding fashion. So you can fold this side down. You can fold the center section down to put larger items like Ikea furniture in here without disturbing the two outboard passengers. That makes it a little bit handier than other vehicles where you'd have to fold down the 40 side of the seat and then your cargo would hit the front passenger seat or you'd have to fold down the 60 side of the seat and then you'd lose one extra seat in the back. Now the rear seats still fold in a 60-40 folding fashion like this. As you can see, you either use that lever right there on the seat or the lever in the rear cargo compartment. All right, let's take a quick spin around the interior. Up here, we have height adjustable seat belts for both the driver and the front passenger. We also have these four-way adjustable headrests. They move in and out as well as up and down. And you use this button on the side, which is a very natural way to move them around. Now, as you can see, our model has this enormous panoramic sunroof. It is one of the largest ones available in this segment. Because our model is essentially a loaded 2.4 liter version, we do have perforated leather seats that are heated and cooled up front and heated rear seats. If we take a look at the front door panels, we do find a lot of soft touch plastics. We have soft touch plastics on the upper, midsection, armrest, and hard touch plastics down lower in the door. Ours is made in this very attractive two-tone scheme where we have brown that matches the seats and this charcoal or black lower and upper. Integrated below the armrest, we have some additional storage as well as a bottle holder. And as you can see, our particular model has the up-level dimension sound system. Moving on over to the dashboard, we also have a combination of hard and soft touch plastics. We have hard touch plastics right up here on top, which is a little bit different because these hard touch plastics mate right over there by the door with the soft touch plastics up there. We have soft touch plastics right over here, very similar to the door as well. We also have fake carbon fiber trim, and then below that, everything in the dashboard is a hard plastic. Now, even though the Santa Fe does have a lot of hard plastics going on on the interior, it is very attractively designed. And this is what I refer to frequently as choosing the right corners to cut. Hard plastics are less expensive to manufacture in general than soft touch plastics. So Hyundai saves a little bit of extra money here by giving you a hard touch upper dashboard and hard touch lower dashboard. And that is part of what gets the Santa Fe Sport its low price tag. Now in relative terms, it's easy to make things cheap, but value is quite another matter. And I think that Hyundai cut all the right corners inside this cabin. Moving down lower in the dashboard, we have a moderately sized glove compartment. You can see we have this very chunky instruction manual here, and that does fit in there. I was able to fit an iPad and another small tablet computer right inside. Now our particular model also has the top end infotainment and navigation system. If you wanna know more about this, then go ahead and click that banner at the bottom of your screen and you'll be taken on over to that review. We have keyless go right over here. That's this button on the right side of the steering wheel, buttons for our front and rear defogger, button for our access to climate control system. This is more of just a display because you actually access the various functions with the buttons right over here. So you change the mode, which vent the air is coming out of with that button right there. Change whether you want dual zone climate control enabled or disabled temperature buttons right there, fan button, or you can just hit auto. Below the climate control, we have this storage cubby right here, and it is accessible from either side or from the front. There's some small openings there. We have 12 volt power outlets right there. And then behind this hinge door, we have our auxiliary input and our USB input and a little storage cubby with a mat to help throw various items in there. One nice improvement in this version is that we no longer need a special adapter cable in order to use an iPod or other iOS device. You just use the USB cable. Now behind that storage cubby, we have our heated and our cooled seat controls. And this does have a cooled seat for both the driver 
and the front passenger right over there. We have a very traditional gear shift, and then we have two very large cup holders. These are not closable or adjustable, and uh, they do accommodate the very largest of drinks that I was able to throw at it. Center armrest is large and thickly padded. If we open it, we have a tier for storage there, and then we have a very deep well. We can throw a lot of things in there. I was able to fit a gallon of milk for reference right there in there, but I was not able to close the lid with the gallon of milk inside. Over on the driver's side, we have this very typical two dial instrument cluster. We have the tachometer over here on the left and the speedometer over here on the right. I suppose you could almost call us a four dial instrument cluster because we get a little temperature dial for the engine and a little fuel dial right over there inside the speedometer and the tachometer. In between those, we have this color multi-information display. It is controlled by this button module right over here on the steering column that we'll take a look at in a bit. You could cycle between AV information, navigation directions, service information, settings, as well as our trip computer that gives us range, as well as trip A and trip B. Now, one very interesting touch with this instrument cluster is if I look around the steering wheel at the side of this instrument cluster, you can actually see that the module where the fuel gauge as well as the temperature gauge are located actually sort of floats above the respective dial. So I'll zoom right in on that and you can see that's actually sort of a, like a little hockey puck right there. Moving out to the steering wheel, we have this very attractive four spoke steering wheel. This themed sort of like a three spoke steering wheel. These two spokes at the bottom sort of narrow to give it a three spoke visualization right there. On this side, we have our radio controls, volume up, down, track up, down, mute mode button. Voice command button, hang up and pick up buttons are dedicated. Again, these buttons right along this side control that multi-information display right there in the center. On this side, we have our cruise control buttons, cruise enable, disable, cancel, resume and set. And it also gives you uh, up and down in terms of speed. Right over here, we have a button to change the steering effort in the vehicle. As you can see, if I press that button right now, we're in sport. You can cycle between sport, comfort and normal. It is displayed in that multi-information display. Moving over to the driver's left, we have our window controls down here, mirror controls, two position driver's seat and mirror memory, dimmer, active eco button, and our heated steering wheel button. The Santa Fe Sport has one of the largest cargo capacities among its competitive set. In fact, if you fold the second row flat, you actually get more cargo room in here than you'll get in both the Edge or the Venza. I have two large roller bags here. Obviously, they easily fit right in the back. If I pull them out, you'll notice that I do have an additional little hatch right here. We have some cargo storage over here. We'll have the jack right over here. And then if we lift this other compartment up, and you find a large storage area right back here with a styrofoam divider in it that can be removed from the vehicle. Now, if you do remove that styrofoam divider and its lid, then you can actually put some additional luggage right here in that cargo well, because as you can see, this 24 inch roller bag fits almost completely flush with the cargo load floor once that's in there. Now, the second row also slides forward and aft, like I said earlier, that's an option, but that means that you can put additional luggage all the way forward there and still fit a shorter person right there in the second row. Aiding in cargo practicality is a subwoofer that's very nicely integrated in the side of the cargo area so it doesn't take up additional cargo space. We also have some cargo tie downs on the side and we have a lever right here to help you fold the second row seat from either the back or from the second row seat itself. So there's a handle on the seat, you can do that over there or you can just pull this handle right here. We do not, however, have a standard tonneau cover that is a little bit of a disappointment. Even though we don't have a power tailgate in this model, we do have a very sturdy handle right here to help you close the tailgate and it's not terribly heavy, making it easier to close the tailgate. Right over here is a very handy feature. If you take a look at that little logo there, it should tell you what it is. It's the tailgate release. So if you do get trapped in the tailgate, you can release it like that. This is not required by federal law. You only have to have it in vehicles with an actual trunk, but I do think it's a very nice touch in this crossover. I love additional under the floor cargo room so much. I'm going to give this 10 out of 10 points when it comes to my exclusive trunk comfort index. You do have quite a bit of room right here under this cargo partition. That's something I really appreciate. If you want to know how the 2014 Hyundai Santa Fe drives, as well as pricing and how it stacks up to the competition, then go ahead and click that button right below me. And you'll be taken on over to part two of two on this video review.